Welcome to the Marriage Steps Podcast, where developing a long-lasting, happy relationship is the status symbol to achieve. And following my six marriage steps is a path to help get you there. I'm your host, Dr. Wyatt Fisher, a licensed psychologist specializing in marriage counseling. The Marriage Steps Podcast is listener-supported, so to help keep it on the air so couples worldwide can receive hope for their marriage, please consider becoming a monthly supporter by going to Patreon dot com forward slash marriage steps have a different type of program for you today i'm going to talk about the five ways to prepare for marriage counseling so a lot of couples need marriage counseling but they don't go to a marriage counselor research shows that most couples wait four to seven years after problems have started before they finally reach out to a marriage counselor. And when you wait that long, by the time you show up to marriage counseling, you're exhausted and you're hanging on by a thread. So the first thing I wanna say to you is don't wait. If you're struggling in your marriage, if you're facing challenges, if you're feeling hopeless, don't wait until you're on your last leg. Don't wait until you're hanging on by a thread. Reach out, be proactive, get help. We go to the dentist for our teeth. We go to the plumber for our car. We go and reach out to all these other services. So go to a marriage counselor for your marriage. So I'm gonna cover five ways to prepare for marriage counseling. The first way is you need to be motivated. Marriage counselors can only help you to the degree you wanna be helped. If you're showing up to marriage counseling and you don't wanna be there, you don't really want your marriage to improve, guess what? Marriage counseling is not gonna help you because a marriage counselor can only help you to the degree that you wanna be helped. And so you have to be motivated. You have to find your why. You have to find your reasons why you wanna be there and why you want things to get better because the more motivated you are, the more you're gonna get out of the marriage counseling. Number two, you have to be teachable for marriage counseling to work. If you think nothing is your fault, if you're hard-hearted, if you're defensive, if you're resistant, if you get angry towards the marriage counselor, marriage counseling is not gonna help you. Marriage counseling only works if you're teachable, if you're willing to look at your part, if you're willing to be corrected, because a lot of times marriage counselors will notice where each partner needs to improve, where each partner is off in their thinking or off in their approach. And a good marriage counselor will highlight that. They'll point out the growth areas. And a good client will be receptive. They'll be receptive to that feedback because they're teachable. So if you wanna have marriage counseling be successful, you have to be teachable. Third is application. So a lot of times in marriage counseling, you're gonna go through all sorts of ideas, homework assignments, insights, but if you don't apply any of that information outside of the session, the marriage counseling isn't gonna help that much because a lot of the work falls to the couple outside of sessions. So I often tell the couples I work with that the majority of the work happens between our sessions. So as we talk about things for you to try, as we talk about homework assignments, as we talk about application exercises, as we talk about all these things, it's up to you what you do with it. So if you do nothing with the ideas, if you don't implement them, then the marriage counseling is not gonna be very effective. And I have couples who do this. We'll talk about things and we come up with ideas and homework assignments, and then a whole week will go by, we'll have a session again, and they haven't done any of it. And guess what? Those types of couples progress is much slower. So you have to be prepared for application. Marriage counseling is not just one session a week. It includes all of your application of the content in between the sessions. Number four is the flow. So the flow of marriage counseling is gonna look somewhat different per couple, depending on the topic, depending on their growth areas. The flow that I tend to follow is I like to start with resentments because I view marriage as a plant. And if you're gonna plant some seeds to grow a plant, what's the first thing you do? You have to prepare the soil because if you're gonna plant seeds and if there's unhealthy soil with a lot of rocks in the soil, the seeds aren't gonna take root. Likewise with marriage. So if you're gonna have a good marriage, we have to first dig out the soil to make sure it's healthy. 
And in that soil usually is resentments, which I view them as rocks in the soil. So the first thing I do with most couples is we have to tackle resentments. If you don't tackle resentments, nothing else is gonna work because you resent each other. And every time you resent your partner for something, it's a brick in the wall dividing your intimacy. It's gonna decrease your motivation. It's gonna decrease your desire to do things for your partner. So I spent a lot of time in the beginning of my counseling with couples tackling the resentments. Once we work through the resentments, then we move on to building friendship. A lot of couples forget through the years how to be friends, but that's exactly how they started. So we have to start over with how to build back friendship. And there's lots of skills we work on with friendship. And then once that's going well, then we start working on sensual activity together. And there's all sorts of things we can get into with sensual activity. And when that's starting to go well, then we move into sexual activity and all the different ways to enhance that. So again, every couple's a little different with what they need, but that tends to be a pretty solid flow. So resentments first, then friendships, then sensual activity, then sexual activity. Even though that's the flow, obviously there's lots of variation based on the specific topics couples are bringing in. That could be difficult in-laws, that could be children parenting together, that could be finances, sky's the limit. So there's so many different topics. So those get woven in as we're working through those four stages to make the relationship better. The fifth thing to prepare for for marriage counseling is your mindset on how long it might take to make improvement. So research shows it takes on average six months for couples to make progress, substantial progress in marriage counseling. And that would make sense because if you think about it, most couples are experiencing problems in their relationship for years before they even come to marriage counseling. Then it takes a while for the couple to start implementing the changes, habits die hard, and it takes a while for a marriage counselor to really get a handle on the vicious cycles for a couple and to really become effective at what can help that couple. So six months is a good rule of thumb. And it's important to know that because a lot of times when you're going through marriage counseling, sometimes things get worse before they get better because you have to unpack the hurts and the resentments and rehash sometimes a lot of the the dirt and the the challenges and the difficult periods in your relationship so i always encourage couples to remember that six month time frame so they can keep things in perspective how long have we been working together how long have we been going towards that six months it's a good time frame to keep in mind some couples it takes less than that perhaps three to four months other couples i've worked with for one to two to three years it just depends on the patterns of behavior, how entrenched they are, how much resentments there are, how motivated the couple is, how much they're implementing in between sessions. There's a lot of variables that go into the speed of recovery for a marriage, but six months is a good rule of thumb. So that's five ways to prepare for marriage counseling. Number one, it's how motivated you are. Number two, how teachable you are. Number three, how much you apply what's learned in between sessions. Number four, prepare for the flow of counseling, resentments, friendship, sensual activity, then sexual activity. And number five is prepare for the length, give or take around six months. Thank you for listening to the Marriage Steps podcast. If you enjoyed the episode today, be sure to click the five stars and leave a review. For more marriage resources, be sure to go to my website, drwyattfisher.com. And remember, your marriage is alive. So if you care for it and nurture it, it will grow. But if you deprive it and neglect it, it will wilt and die. The choice is up to you. Take care.